This is an incinerator in Helsingborg, Sweden. Exciting, right? I get excited about waste management. As my students will attest, I get excited about a lot of things, and I want you to get excited too. Let me tell you a little bit more about this incinerator. The operators of the incinerator get paid for each load of trash they receive. That's right, they get money for trash. The heat that is generated by burning the trash boils water, and that creates steam. The steam is then piped to local communities to heat their homes and businesses. So yeah, they get money from the heat they generate from the trash they were paid to take. This is a carpet factory in Sharpenzell, Netherlands. Well, this is me and a group of students in front of a carpet factory. They have mastered the art of minimizing waste. They have designed a carpet tile that is made out of bio-based materials, and they even have super efficient systems. This is my hometown square. She mentioned my cousin Vinny, and this is where it was filmed. You may recognize it. My family and my values are, or my family and my hometown are the source of my values. You know, I am fascinated with creative corporate solutions. Having taught business ethics at Georgia College and State University for 10 years, I've heard students express grave disappointment at certain business practices, like making up earnings, or releasing private data, or taking advantage of customers again and again. On the other hand, I've heard from inspiring corporate citizens, like YKK Corporation of America's former CEO, Alex Gregory, who shared his thoughts on values and culture in my business ethics courses. I've also read about Interface's founder, Racy Anderson, and I've read up on Aflac's long-serving CEO, Dan Amos. I've traveled much of the United States and some of the world visiting manufacturing sites. I think about business ethics every day. Thinking about ethics is thinking about value-based decision-making, questions of right and wrong, asking that fundamental question, what should I do? I think about it at the grocery store. Should this product have this label? I think about it opening up a delivery box. Should this personal message be written here? I think about it when I listen to the news on the radio when I'm driving to school. I think, should that corporate CEO serve time in jail? I want to talk to you today about values. My values, your values, and values you may not think about all the time corporate values. Values are life's guideposts. They help us decide which path to take. I ask my business ethics students every year to share with me their top 10 values, and I've been collecting that information over the last 10 years. I'd like to share with you some of the values that they hold dear, which may surprise you. These are their top three values. You may have been imagining like beer parties and something else, but this is what we got. These are the top three values, and these are the remaining values on their top 10. These are college students. If you ever feel like you are losing hope in humanity, I invite you to spend some time with my students, and you will feel excited and inspired about our collective future. Now, corporations, though different from humans and that they do not have a finite lifespan, nevertheless often identify values. They are the guideposts that lead their decision-making, that drive their corporate culture. Corporate integrity, like personal integrity, is a firm adherence to values. Diversity is often listed as a top value, but what are companies doing consistent with that value? Environmental stewardship is often listed as a top value, but are their actions consistent with that value? When I returned to my hometown of Monticello, I visited our local plywood mill, and I watched pine trees transform into building products. 
When I went on a road trip with my family, my husband and three children at the time in tow, we went to the, one of the largest coal strip mines in the United States in Wyoming. And more recently, I took a group of students on an economic tour of Georgia, and we visited YKK's manufacturing facility in Macon, where we watched zippers get made from the production of brass in a smelter to the final finishing touches. And this is what I think about every time I visit one of those factory floors or businesses. I think, are they doing right by their employees? Are they doing right by the environment? When I lived in Oregon, I worked for a workers' compensation attorney. It was a small office. I was his only attorney employee. And yet, he provided us with health insurance because he saw every day the devastating impact when people get hurt or are injured and they don't have health insurance. It might have been a financial hardship, but it was the right thing to do for him. When I took a group of students on a study abroad trip to Sweden, we visited the home of Absolute Vodka in our house, where we learned that they source all of their ingredients from southern Sweden. Now, this may not be the cheapest route, but it was the right thing to do for them. Corporations, more than ever, are entering the public square as problem solvers. Equipped with specialized knowledge, design tools, and capital, they drive social change because it's the right thing to do. And sometimes, value-based decision-making can drive social change even when governments fail to do so. Let me give you a few examples. Let's start with climate change. When the United States withdrew from the Paris Climate Agreement in 2017, hundreds of companies, cities, and organizations got together to pledge their commitment to combat climate change. Years prior, Interface a modular tile company with a headquarters in Georgia, the same company that has that facility in the Netherlands, sought to reach net zero emissions by 2020. They went even further with Climate Take Back, an initiative to sequester carbon in carpet tiles. Carpet tiles. We see companies time and again making an impact in these social issues. Another example is public health. We can see some companies paying living wages. We can see some companies paying wages to people when they get sick or when they decide to start a family. And my colleague, Joanna Schwartz, who will be on the stage shortly, she's going to talk about how companies can make a difference in the area of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Now, some scholars, they will look to these efforts, these, really, these real initiatives to address social problems and call it virtue signaling, or the intentional and perhaps insincere public sharing of moral stances. And sometimes they are. Enron had values. Think of your favorite corporate meltdown, and no doubt they had values down on paper or up on the wall. But there's a critical difference between values and integrity. Integrity is adhering to your values. What if more companies show integrity? What if they adhere to their values? What if they weave their values into the very fabric of their corporate structure? What if they do right? Companies should do right by their employees, their customers, their environment, and their communities, and not just their shareholders. And when they do, society can change for the better. The Business Roundtable arrived at a similar conclusion when they redefined the purpose of a corporation in 2019 to benefit all stakeholders. I want people to think differently about the businesses they patronize. I want people to think differently about the places where you decide to work. I want them to do research. I want them to ask questions. Do I really need this? Was the person who made this paid a fair wage? Did the making of this product hurt anyone or anything? Am I proud of working here? Companies can make a difference. Yes, we can all make a cumulative, positive impact on society with the little decisions we make every day. But big corporations, multinationals, the acmes of the world, 
They have an opportunity to make a difference on a global scale, to give, to serve, to be conscientious. It's not the enemy of profit, it's compatible. And it could solve some of our social problems. Individuals, entrepreneurs, leaders, go out there, identify a problem, come up with a solution and make the world a better place for it. If they can do it with carpet and trash, you could do it with agriculture, transportation, energy production in any sector, with any product. We can do better. You can do better.